Bienvenido, como de costumbre, a este, su canal, el canal de la Universidad de Magallanes. Y a este programa en particular sobre Ludwig van Beethoven, el maestro inmortal. Este es nuestro programa número 5, podríamos decir nuestro Opus 5. Aquí le traemos una gran novedad. Yo voy a hablar un par de segundos nomás, porque lo más importante viene ahora. Es una película hecha por la BBC que trata sobre el estreno, diríamos, de la Sinfonía número 3 de Beethoven en Viena en 1804. Es un trabajo realmente estupendo. Está absolutamente apegado a lo que la historia dice. No hay ninguna fantasía. Es posible que algunos tiempos cambien, pero resulta que todo lo que se ve y lo que se dice está pegado absolutamente a lo que sucedió en esa ocasión. Aquí veremos a un Beethoven de más o menos 34 años, con su alumno, Federal Ries, en la casa de un príncipe. Me voy a permitir leerlo porque son nombres complejos. Del príncipe Joseph Franz von Lobkowitz. Él fue el que lo acogió y ahí se estrenó por primera vez ante un reducido público. Pero estaba, por supuesto, su señora y apareció también el gran amor de Beethoven, doña Josephine von Brunswick. Sus hijos, de la señora esta. Y también apareció uno de sus grandes profesores, Joseph Haydn. Bien, pues los invitamos entonces con mucho cariño a ver esta realmente obra de arte. Es un ejemplo de cómo puede hacerse una película basada en hechos reales de un gran músico. Vamos. There are some extra fellows coming for today's rehearsal. Please make sure, Willie, that they're properly turned out and given beer before we start. Good morning, sir. Ah, Reese, you're here. I'm sorry I'm late. Doesn't matter. You gave me time to have a shave. Don't look like a wild beast, do we? And how are you today? Happy to find you in such good humor, sir. Why wouldn't I? Have you seen my good shirt? I did ask the girl to press it. God knows if she has. Is this it? I'm afraid they're uh, complaining downstairs. 
They say water's coming in through the ceiling. I only had a wash! What's the matter with them? Do you still want to walk, sir? I could try and find a carriage. No. It's a lovely day. Let's walk. The score's on the piano. Do you feel nervous, sir? What about? The, the new composition. No, why would I feel nervous about that? I feel invincible. I can conquer the city. You'll succeed where Bonaparte has failed. Bonaparte was trying to liberate us, please, not conquer us. Free us from tyranny. He's got a rather aggressive way of doing it. My friend Mensal says he'll be back. No, they won't attack again. We've signed a peace. Anyway, that's not what I was thinking about. What were you thinking about? Good morning, children. Have you breakfasted? Yes, Mother. People are running everywhere. Is it music again? A hair Beethoven is coming. Come along, children. You'll be late. I can't play on an empty stomach. I'm sorry, Paul. Oh. Can you play? Of course I can play. I just can't get to the damn place. I don't want to lose my job. Count, welcome. We have a special treat for you today. As a fellow enthusiast, I think you'll find it rather thrilling. Haydn. Beethoven. Ah. Oh. He has a new symphony. We shall be the first people to hear it in the entire world. Where's my flat crook? I need it. Come on, give it to me. No, 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 it doesn't make you any less an idiot, Ruth. Isn't this magnificent? I don't think anyone loves nature as much as I do. As if the trees take root in my heart. I would have killed myself long before now if it wasn't for this. Carry on, you fellows, carry on. Uh, as soon as all are here, we'll begin. Vranitsky, the leader. Vranitsky, Count Dietrichstein. How many years have you been with the household? 18, 20? Never says a word. <laughs> Shall we? Are we allowed to listen? Oh, yes. Rights of men and all that. We get to listen for sure. The prince thinks it's good for us. What sort of music is it? Well, as a rule, you can dance to it, or you can pray to it, one or the other. As a rule, Very 
sorry, Your Highness. He can hardly walk. I had to hire a carriage. Oh, don't mention it. You're dutiful. I admire that. Let your father rest a while. Oh, oh what did it cost, Paul? Oh, a florin, Your Highness. You'll get it back. Citizen Fisher. Citizen! You're late for the revolution, Otto. I'm always late. <laughs> I don't think you've met Count Dietrich Stein from Prague. Good morning. Ludwig van Beethoven. This is my student, Rees. I hear you're a gifted pianist, but I know nothing more. Van Beethoven? Are you Dutch? No, from Bonn. Uh, and um, what rank? Landowner? A landowner? Do I look like a landowner? No, I'm a brain owner. Oh, <laughs> brain owner, that's good. <laughs> Fertile soil. <laughs> Our friend thinks his talent exempts him from everyday customs of deference. It does, doesn't it? Oh, it does, it does. Well, here it does, anyway. <laughs> What's the matter? She's not here. She'll come. This will all be gone one day, you know. It'll all be swept aside. Yes, so they say. All wealth repossessed by the people. There won't be much left by then. These concerts and that. He squandered the family fortune. symphony dedicated? I don't know. It says uh, Bonaparte on the front. Bonaparte? Oh, uh, forgive me, Your Highness, for mentioning the name. No, I don't mind. I'm a great lover of everything French. The guillotine? The terror? No, that's all over and done with, surely. No, we have much to learn from our friends in Paris. Their society will go forwards, whereas here we'll just stagnate, because we are nothing. We do nothing. We make the best music in Europe. Can music exist independently of politics, Herr Rees? I couldn't say. Couldn't you? I could. Will the peace hold? Or will the Russians and the British drag us into war? What do you think, Lobkowitz? I don't really know very much about it, my friend. I'm not exactly up to the minute with international affairs. 
Uh, what are you giving us today? Will we find it original? It's original from beginning to end. <laughs> That's impossible, surely. The fact is, I've taken a new direction, Your Highness. A new direction? A new path. I needed a new path through the woods. Something was wrong with the old path? Most serene highness. We've been working round the clock. The peace is a monster. says it's about Napoleon. How may a piece of music be said to be about something? I've never seen anything like it. It may not be music at all. I thought you lot were supposed to be good. It's off the beat, sir. And there's so many markings, we can hardly read them. Gentlemen, gentlemen, it is our first attempt. Patience, please. Even to my ears, it does sound rather fiendish. Rather difficult to play, don't you think? Violent. Needlessly violent. I've marked it exactly as I want it played. The marking here, you, you see, is Forzando. Forzando? A sharp attack to each note, Your Highness. I'm really hammering it. How modern. Look, my friend, you're trained to make a beautiful sound. But I don't want a beautiful sound. Elsewhere, yes, but not here. This is a summons, an imperative. Play me the first two chords. I, I want more intensity, more guts. Again, please. Don't be so tentative and play louder. We never play louder than that. And some of it's hard to follow. It keeps changing. Yes, it changes. The, the mood shifts all the time. But are you telling me you can't play it? Not at all. Then play it for the love of Christ! Could we play it a little slower, sir? No. Not slow, urgent.
that's it, yes. Punch every accent.
Fool! Wrong! Don't interrupt! Well, it's a copious mistake, is it? I've left my two eldest in the nursery. I hope that's what I'm doing. What's all the fuss? That's my hand. There's no mistake. Of course there's no mistake. Extraordinary. Otto, play that is written. Uh, let's go on, shall we? I'm terribly sorry. What are you trying to do? Wreck my day. It didn't sound right. I didn't obey the rules. No. Let's go away. Go over there. Go over there. Piss off. Gentlemen.
finished. Let's go straight on. Uh, th that was quite superlative. I thought of a battle, I thought of a general, the horse rearing, the saber shining, and columns of men streaming through the mountains. I was meant to, wasn't I? If you like. If it was a battle, we should have had snare drums, surely. Drums and fifes and march time. I, I, I rather gained a picture of a hero of antiquity, a, a Greek, perhaps, a, a Achilles. <clears throat> Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm forgetting. Um, may I present my cousin, von Dietrichstein, the Countess von Dame, the Countess von Brunswick. How is your brother? He's at Karompa Castle, otherwise he would certainly be here. He adores these gatherings. He sends his love to you. Forgive us for missing the opening, Louis. Well, you didn't miss very much, my dear. Tasteless intermarriage of the diatonic and the chromatic. Hardly worth hurrying for. Well, what we heard was splendid. <clears throat> Let's have it very, very softly. The mocking sotto voce. Under your breath. That's absurd. That's a vocal marking. Don't see any singers, do you? It's a funeral march, Vinitsky. Oh, watch out for the crescendos. They don't go all the way. on the horses and gold epaulets. Shh. But who has died? Is it the hero?
That wasn't bad. It's not a symphony, though. And you sit in judgment, do you? You decide what is art. Oh, steady on, steady on, young man. I didn't say it wasn't art. The symphony has a structure. This is a formless mass, a mere arrangement of noise, a great piling up of colossal ideas. It's very moving. In parts, it has elements of the sublime. But it is also full of discord. And it lacks rounding out. It is not what we call a symphony. I, 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 I don't think it's concluded yet. Is it? My point entirely. It's lunchtime and we're only halfway through. I take it it does have four movements. Gerhard! Matthias. You must admit, dear friend, it is rather difficult. That Serene Highness is the most lavish praise that can be given to an artist. Really? And how paradoxical. Why? Because difficult is good. Difficult is beautiful. Difficult is closer to the truth. Ah, yes, I, I, I see what you're getting at. Well done, Louis. So moving, so very... how to put it? French. French? It is new, it is bold. It is French. The French are marauding thugs and Bonaparte an ill-bred adventurer. Louis doesn't think so, do you? He's the champion of the poor. Well, well, well that, that's a good thing, I suppose. I mean, somebody has to be. He's a charlatan. He doesn't give a fig for the poor. He hasn't done half as much for them as our Lobkowitz here. He won't last long if he carries on like that. He's only a musician employed by the prince. You can't go insulting your employer. He's not employed by the prince. He's not a servant like Vranitsky. He writes what he likes, when he likes. But he still can't talk to the nobility of Austria and Hungary as if they were his equals. He believes he is noble by virtue of his talent. He doesn't accept the inequality. Those are dangerous sentiments, Harry's. People have been hanged for less. <laughs> <laughs> right, lads. This is for the players. The gentlefolk will have some proper food later on. Beer, please. And you, keep your hands off that lady's maid. Kirsten? I haven't given it a moment's thought. What do you reckon to the band, then? They've taken the symphony to new heights. Christ, have they? Go on. Like a Roman hero, he sweeps the old oligarchies before him. He calls himself first consul, but there are only three. What's that if not an oligarchy? If not the rule of the few? The people love Napoleon. The people will tire of war. No, because this war means an end to oppression all over Europe. I'd rather be oppressed than dead. Lost my brother in 96. My father also served with the volunteers. I did. I did. And I got home alive. Thank God. There were 60,000 of us, but we still got thrashed. You, sir, you wrote us a patriotic song. We are all patriots here, Albrecht. Yes, some of us are more patriotic than others. Huh? The French came within 50 miles of the city in 96. I'm damned if I'll ever let them get that close again. <laughs> Gentlemen, if Bonaparte is defeated, we're back in the Dark Ages and all our new ideas will go for nothing because we won't be allowed to speak. Better that than be ruled by the French. Well, France stands for freedom. I'm for it. You, sir, what are you for? I'll tell you what I'm against. I'm against tyranny. And the truth is, that's what Bonaparte's been fighting to overthrow. On that point, I'm with Otto. But will there be a revolution here? Well, I think that... that as long as your Viennese has his beard and his sausage, he won't cause any trouble and go about his business. <laughs> On the other hand, if he misses breakfast, he'll revolt. To the barricade, citizens! I'm starving! <laughs> your Highness, we don't feed these fellows, there's going to be trouble. I had, in fact, thought of that. Oh. 
Sir, you were right about one thing. Our prince's magnanimity cannot be faulted. Well, it is in the nature of good government, Herr Beethoven, to be charitable to the poor. Yes, yes. And presumably under the very best type of government, the poor will disappear altogether. <laughs> I don't think so, my friend. I don't think so. Louis, you're such a dreamer. May we talk for a moment? Sir, I'm not impertinent, you know. My crime is that I am hot-blooded. I am not very good at concealing my emotions. But I don't mean any offence. So? It's going well, isn't it? Apart from that silly ass Reese, it's not going badly. I nearly didn't come. Josephine. My darling. Look, if you hadn't come... It's hard for me. Yes. It's only been a few months since... Yes, it's very sudden, I know, but soon... You'll go back to Karompa Castle, and then if... If I haven't... Attempted to... Uh, I know. So I've ventured. And I don't know how it'll turn out. It'll turn out the best for everyone. Do you remember when first your mother brought you to me for piano lessons? I couldn't decide whether to fall in love with you or your sister. Oh, Louis. Louis. Thank God. Thank God it was you. Well, maybe you would have been happier with Therese. Impossible. Maybe Therese would not have married and given birth to four children. Maybe not. But I did. One dame was a good choice. I understand that, a pragmatic choice. But now, sweet Josephine. Ludwig, how do you think we would live? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Things are improving, very much so. I don't intend to be poor forever. Oh, you're going to be rich. It's inevitable. But how? You can barely add and subtract. I agree. I am a useless businessman who's bad at arithmetic. My brothers are looking after my interests. They're not as financially incompetent as I. Prince Liknowski is prepared to pay me an annuity of 600 florins. And last year, I got 1,800 for a benefit concert. It's not enough. It's not enough. I don't think, my love, you have the first idea of what things cost. I don't, really. I do. Look, my brother Carl's salary at the civil service is only 250 a year, and he lives on it. I can get 1,800 for a concert. It's not the money. What is it, then? I have four children. I will be a father to them. It doesn't work like that. I'm not saying no. I've been a widow for seven months. You're not saying no, are you? I love you dearly. You're free now to marry whom you wish. You do like my music, don't you? It's so loud. So warlike. The transitions are so abrupt. It speaks to me of turbulence. And I want peace. Desperately, I want peace. I admire it. I'm devoted to it. But it frightens me, to be honest. It frightens you. Passion can be a frightening thing. Sir, excuse me. They're ready to play the scherzo. Can't you see I'm in conversation with a lady? Yes, sir. Sorry. I'm sorry. You are unforgivably stupid, Reese. Everything you do is calculated to inflame my temper. Go and tell Vinitsky to start without me. This bit is done. Don't you need to hear it? 
I need to hear the horns, otherwise it's done. How can you be sure? The light relief after the funeral, the dance, the return to life. It's easy, it's done. Are you angry with me? I'm not angry. You sound angry. Are you saying no? You need to hear your horns. I need to hear your answer, Countess. Will you marry me, or won't you? I cannot. I take it I'm not good enough for you. Yes, you are. I love you. But you're frightened of my music. Obviously, I shouldn't have said that. Do you want me to try and change your mind? About the music? No, about the marriage, damn you. Forgive me. That was rude, I'm sorry. Louis, there is no point. If I could marry you, I would. But it is forbidden to me. There is no life without you. You're my whole world. My heart is full of all the things I want to say to you. But sometimes I think that speaking amounts to nothing at all. It's a worthless faculty speech. The law in Austria is clear. If I marry a commoner, I not only lose my title, but the custody of my children. They will be taken away from me. You cannot be their father. It has no legality. We travel. I was thinking of going to France. I cannot be without my children, Louis. You cannot marry a man without a title. No. My horns are coming now.
Straight on, let's get to the end. Sir. Sir. Beast, you interfering insect what? Sir, her hiding is here. Master. Herr Heiden, do come in. We're so pleased to see you. Uh, let us offer some champagne. I hope it is an open rehearsal. Sir, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Uh, sir, my student, Reese. He's an idiot. All students are idiots. It's traditional. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we sit? Your Highness. He's been Kappelmeister to the Esterhazes for more than 30 years. The old prince is dead, but his son keeps hiding on. But he can write for whoever he wants. Well, couldn't he before? <laughs> no, of course not. Not for anyone but the Esterhazes. Well, I thought he was highborn. Hyden. His father was a wheelwright. There's hope for me yet, then. Oh, I doubt it. Did you do it? Oh, thank you. Well, I'm looking forward to it very much indeed. How's it going? Splendidly. Splendidly. It is a work of quality, Herr Haydn. Uh, sad to say, not the highest. Oh. Unlike your own work, sir, it does not strive for perfection of form. It's all roaring and grunting. But the only thing I could remember striving for is a balance between the emotions and the intellect. The key, as ever, is restraint. I'm not very good at restraint. <laughs> and we love you for it, Louis. None of it is worth anything, finally. Since my dear wife died, all I can think about is... When is the end coming? Will it be today? My strength is gone, Your Highness. I... Oh, I suffer dreadful headaches, dizziness, and... I can't play the piano anymore. So. But you have composed The Seasons, a work of brilliance. No, The Seasons wore me out. I shouldn't have written it. Finished me. He's obsessed with death. My master reveres him. They're not normal, these people. You should go to England. One can earn good money there. Really? I'd like to find a publisher who'd pay me an annual income for life. In return, they'd have the right to put out everything I compose. All I want is financial security so I can work. I think Goethe has this arrangement. And if I'm not mistaken, Handel's London publisher did the same for him. <laughs> but um, you're not Goethe. Nor are you Handel. And nor will you ever be. How do you know? Because people like that are no longer born. My dear fellow, he doesn't mean to hurt you. It's very common, that viewpoint. They cannot bring themselves to believe a young person can achieve anything. So reactionary. Serene Highness, I cannot associate with people who do not believe in me. Let's finish the rehearsal. I don't feel like it. I want to go home. Oh, please, don't go. In Halligenstadt, I'm happy. There are trees and streams and sunsets. What is there for me here? My husband has a proposal for you. Have I? Oh, yes. Um, I love this piece of music, Ludwig. It's an extraordinary experiment upon an unsuspecting world. I should like to hear it again. Shall we say 2,000 florins for six months? Exclusive rights? This is the finale. Yes. 
Have we a subject? Heroism. Excellent.
What would you like to go for supper, sir? Prince Lovkovitz invites us to dine at the palace. You don't want to. I'd rather eat with you. Also, I'm finding I can't always hear what they say. They think I'm rude, but really I can't make out the words. My ears are useless, Reese. And my guts aren't much better. Did you see her, Reese? Who, sir? The Countess. Oh, yes, sir. Beautiful, isn't she? Well, I think the sisters are the prettier. Reese, you may know something of counterpoint and harmony. You know nothing whatsoever about life. What do you say, Herr Haydn? Very long, very tiring. Unusual, though, wasn't it? Unusual. He's done something no other composer has attempted. He's placed himself at the center of his work. He gives us a glimpse into his soul. I expect that's why it's so uh, noisy. But it is quite, quite new. The artist does hear her. Quite new. Everything is different from today. Excuse me, sir. There's Mental. I'll just say hello. What will you have, sir? I beg your pardon. I said, what will you have, sir? Mensel's just back from his club. There's news from Paris. What news? Bonaparte's just made himself emperor. Emperor? Yes. He's had a coronation and everything. He's no longer first consul. He's an emperor. Just like all the others. Eat your fish, please.
Thank you. ¿Qué les pareció? Estupendo, ¿no es cierto? Esta producción de la BBC de Londres es realmente extraordinaria. Para nosotros ha sido un agrado poder llevar esta producción para ir contribuyendo a que usted cada vez sepa más de este gran genio, Ludwig van Beethoven. Nos veremos en el próximo capítulo. Que tengan un muy lindo resto del día. Adiós.